Hi, Mike from Mike's Carburetor Parts. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the on bench adjustments on this Motorcraft 2100 two barrel carburetor. But first, uh, let's do a quick 15 second ad about our website, mikescarb.com. I rebuilt my carburetor, but it's still flooding. Do you know what's wrong? I don't know. Maybe you should have bought your parts at Mike's Carburetor Parts. So first uh, adjustment we'll do is set the float level. And uh, we use the same setting for brass and nitrofill. Uh, we don't put the gasket on in this case. And what we're going to do is put a straight edge over here and measure from the top of the bowl to the top of the float at the toe end. Okay, so measure down here. And uh, I preset mine at 5 8 and it looks like it needs to be adjusted up a little. Um, now the, the spec depends on your application. So, uh, and uh, this is what the uh, specification sheet looks like. Find your make, year, and engine, and use that specification. If it's not listed, then go to the closest match for your engine. Okay. So again, you hold this down, don't put too much pressure on the needle or it'll cause it to leak. And you measure from the top of the float bowl down to the float. Okay. And to adjust it, you hold the float down. Don't put any pressure on the needle and you bend this tab see it was too low so I want to bend it down a little bit and it's in this case it's easier to take it out so bend this little tab right here doesn't take much don't adjust it by adjusting a pontoon. You'll end up having it leak right here. Now there's no float drop measurement. And I'm going to show you how to put this retainer back on here. Uh, you see it clips on the, the uh, float pin. Move it around like that. There's a little groove that goes around the seat. So you want to get your needle in there. Uh, this little clip on here helps pull a needle out when the float moves up. Or moves down, I should say. Um, and it pulls the needle out. And it can be, uh, hang it on here anywhere just as long as it goes up and down straight. Okay. And what you do is you just uh, push it down until it gets into its there, into the little uh, groove, and that's it. That's how you adjust the float. Okay, our next adjustment is going to be the pump adjustment, your accelerator pump right here. Now there's three types, and uh, I'm going to show you. Uh, uh, an illustration for each one because I only have one carburetor right now and this is the type B I believe I have in hand but here is a an, an illustration uh, of type A okay this is a type A uh, I don't have every type of carburetor on my shelf I think I've been showing you a type B uh, so I'm just gonna go through the illustrations with you this is a type A and the, re the way you can tell is here's your adjustment looks like this. 
There will be no lever sticking up here with uh, three or four holes in it. Uh, and your uh, accelerator pump shaft will be sticking out of the uh, housing a little bit. Okay, so type B like I have, it, it, that's flush. So you measure a different way. As far as the two holes here, use the inside hole. Uh, check your spec sheet. Uh, find the closest engine that you have and use that spec. And that'll tell you whether to put it in the inside or outside hole. And they're almost always on the inside. If in, if in doubt, put it on the inside. Okay, so you're going to measure between the shaft sticking out and the lever right here. And as you can see up here, uh, your standard transmission is 3 16 7 30 seconds and automatic is 7 30 seconds to quarter inch okay again look at your specs and uh, you're looking for the pump adjustment so that's the type on the type B which is the type I have here so what we have here is the type B 2100 and uh, the way I can tell is that uh, it has this adjustment here with the four holes in it and in this case it has the uh, the pump shaft does not stick out of the housing like a type A does and there's real no really no measurement on this you simply look at your data sheet on the spec sheet and it'll tell you which holes to put this rod in generally it's the inside hole but whether you put it in the top the second third or fourth hole and that's it and then we just have to hope that somebody hasn't bit the heck out of this rod um, you know who knows what they've done to it but uh, that's all we can do and uh, and then of course when you're done uh, and you got it back on the car just check your squirt it should squirt quite right away when you open your throttle all right so that's type B uh, I'm going to use an illustration now and show you how to do the type C okay here's an illustration of type C uh, we still have the idle screw here we have this lever here, the over travel lever with the four holes in it. Um, then this one you got the uh, uh, shaft from the accelerator pump diaphragm sticking out a little bit. Now this is on a 6061 and, uh, and they show this as the on the outside hole. So again look at your spec sheet and where the holes are supposed to be. Uh, position your pump rod as shown, this one here in the outside hole and then uh, back out your throttle stop screw again so that your throttle valves are closed and then uh, what you want to do is measure the pump shaft on how much it moves from closed to wide open throttle and on a 1661 is 530 seconds so first you gotta uh, find out figure out if you have a type C and it's just like a type B except the shaft isn't sticking out okay so uh, it says to adjust it uh, if you don't have what you need move the rod to the inside hole and try it again and if still not within the limits and you can you bend it bend this tang down here uh, to adjust it so that's how you do a type C okay so let's do the pull down adjustment and to do this get yourself a paper clip um, bend the end about one-eighth of an inch um, I just took a pair of diagonals bent it over and then I measured this and I actually bent it over to make sure it was more than eighth inch then I started cutting the end off until it was an eighth inch so uh, what you do is you hold the throttle open halfway right about like a so now you need you need at least three arms for all this, okay? And then you pull this out or you move this counterclockwise, put your gauge in here, your eighth inch gauge from the top of the piston to uh, the top of the well here and you want to move it until it's an eighth inch all right there okay and then you measure this distance right here and uh, on my particular one it's uh, yeah let's see here we need like three sixteenths I need a flat edge 
seven that's pretty dang close okay so let's step through this one more time open the throttle halfway uh, now I got it on the bench holding it on the bench here maybe you can wire it open or something like that and then you turn this counterclockwise put your little gauge in there eighth inch gauge and uh, you want the what you want is that piston down an eighth of an inch from the top from the edge here and hold it right there and measure this gap right here this is the pull down um, and what this will do is uh, under certain conditions when it's cold and you and you're pressing on the choke it's not, not going to allow the choke to completely close and uh, flood out the carburetor or cause it to get, be too rich All right now how do you adjust it this little plastic nut right here now I want to tell you there are several different types of choke setups on these 2100s I don't have them all sitting here so I can't go through every one I just go through the one I got here and I will post a picture uh, maybe in this video of uh, the other type so you get an idea how to do this pretty simple just go through the steps so to adjust this uh, this takes a quarter inch socket it's a little plastic deal right here and uh, you adjust it like a so until you get your measurement now on, on this particular model it was 3 16 now you know the 2100s are swapped around a lot um, so if you don't find your exact model on the uh, specification sheet which is included in our manual 2100 manual then um, find the closest engine Okay, so if you have a 289, you get uh, get the spec for the 289, you'll be pretty good. So, like I say, this one was about 3 sixteenths, and uh, there you go. It was pretty close. And, that, and that's how you measure the pull down. So we're going to talk about the uh, choke valve pull down adjustment now. And on a 62 to 63 uh, type, um, you wouldn't have this adjustment here. It would be a solid with uh, a connector here and um, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway just ignore that part uh, this would it would also have a little set screw down here for adjusting uh, and so what you do is you twist your choke counterclockwise you're tighten it up about 90 degrees it puts a lot of tension on it and you want to uh, hold the throttle open about halfway Okay, got my finger down there on it. And then you want to press down on the choke until you hit some resistance. You see here it's easy go until you get right about there. And that's what you want to measure is that little part right in there. And again, look at your adjustment sheet, or excuse me, your data sheet to get what, what that is. And then uh, to adjust it, you, you unscrew the, or loosen the set screw down here and uh, adjust it, this arm. A rod to where you want it and then tighten it up and then don't forget to readjust your choke okay so now we're going to do the uh, choke unloader adjustment um, and we're talking about this part right here and the choke on the top and what we're talking about here is uh, to adjust it is uh, you see how that lever right there hits the cam that's the unloader okay so what you want to do to adjust it is hold it wide open and it's just another one of those deals to hold the choke open uh, when it's cold and you're hitting the gas you got to have it open a little bit and then uh, <clears throat> you hold the choke valve towards the closed position okay you got to take this slop out see that's just wear from uh, the carburetor being 65 years old all right you hold it like that choke is open and you measure that gap in there okay you look at your data sheet and get your gap whatever it is this one looks to be about uh, I don't know three eighths something like that probably too far and uh, to adjust that you bend this right here bend it this way or that way whichever you got to do okay
So if you wanted to, let's see, get this right. If you want to open more, you would bend this towards the cam. If you want to open less, you bend it this way. And it just takes a little bit. And be careful, don't break that off. You won't find another one. Okay? Usually you don't need much at all, if any. All right. That's the unloader adjustment. Now we're going to do the fast idle cam linkage adjustment. Boy, there's more adjustments than this carburetor. Okay, so <clears throat> what first thing we're going to do is load up the choke by turning the thermostat counterclockwise to close it. Tighten it about 90 degrees. That makes it pretty tight. And uh, that's the first thing you do. The next thing is uh, uh, place this fast idle screw. I oh, see this little index mark right here. There's a little mark here on the fast idle cam. And that's what you want to do is set this so the screw is sitting on it. Like so. Stay there. Okay, it doesn't want to stay there very well, so I'm going to have to hold it in there. Okay, and then uh, again... You measure this distance in here and then look at your data sheet to figure out what that's supposed to be. So that's your fast idle linkage adjustment. So again, and to adjust this to make it uh, open or close more, uh, this little, now this one is a little, uh, a lot of these just have a screw in there. This has a little uh, bolt and I don't know what size it is, look like about 3 16 and you adjust it by turning that in and out. This is your fast idle uh, little plastic thing that uh, if you've ever uh, <laughs> you ever melted one, all you need is a little bit of an engine fire and that's the first thing that goes. Uh, fortunately, we still have these things. Anyway, so again, we turn the uh, thermostat 90 degrees tight, put some big load on it, and that's all it's doing is holding it. And the little mark right there, Put the fast idle screw on it. Okay. I got to hold it there. You measure this distance in here, the little gap, and then you adjust it by this screw here. Uh, find you a socket. I would get if, if I was going to move this, which I'm not. I would get a, a socket that fit that and and turn it that way. Yours may have a screw on it. Either way, and that's what you do there. Adjust it according to your uh, spec. And if your uh, particular vehicle isn't on there, uh, you know, these 2100s get swapped around so much. Again, uh, I, I say that all the time. It happens almost all the time uh, to us. Um, pick the engine, the make, the model, the year, whatever, as close as you can and go with that one. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and do the next thing. Let's do the uh, automatic choke adjustment. First of all, I'm gonna now. I'm gonna tell you how I do it. Um, a lot of things will tell you to put on the index mark, etc. Now this thermostat does not have an index mark. There's one on the housing. There's none on the thermostat itself, and uh, that's quite common now. A lot of these are just retrofit now. Uh, you, you won't find an OE generally, and which is okay because you know things are worn. Remember, I showed you how this moved a little bit. See, that's from where. So uh, I don't think sitting on the index is the best way to do it anymore myself. What I do is I open the throttle a little bit, and I do that so that the fast idle and all that is, is not holding it up. So just open that a little bit, and then I twist it, I turn it, close, another eighth inch turn, tighten her up. Just takes very little pressure to open that. And there you go. That's all you need. So that's the on the bench adjustments. Anything else? I guess I better tighten this one too or I forget. Um, this one isn't to be sold by the way. In case you see something wrong. It's just the show and tell carburetor. Uh, the uh, other adjustments you'll do on the car is your... your um, Idle mixture screws. Now you set these that uh, you turn it all the way in on the bench gently. If you do it too hard, you're going to score your uh, screw and then you have to put a new one in. 
So if they're scored or bent, replace them. Okay, turn out at one and a half turns or about on both sides. You get on the car, you warm it up, uh, your choke will be fully open. You put it at idle, and that's very important because you get two, you try to do it at 2000 RPM. Well, obviously, it's not in the idle circuit. So um, it has to be at idle RPM. And then you turn these. Uh, first thing I do is turn them out a little bit more. And then I start turning them in about a quarter turn. And then uh, I let that, I let the engine catch up again. I go to the other side, I do that a quarter of a turn. And I keep doing that until the RPM starts to drop. And as I, you, can, you can hear it, the RPM drops, and then I turn it back a, uh, a quarter turn. And then you do the same thing with the other side. Alternate between them each quarter turn. Uh, one, one screw does it one half of the carburetor, basically. So that's, uh, that's where all is to that. And then set your idle. Of course, you already did that. And then your... Uh, uh, Fast idle, choke closed. It's on the high, uh, almost the high part of the cam, and then you adjust this to a, whatever RPM your uh, motor manual says, 1200, 1500, whatever it is. Okay, so that's the adjustments on a 2100. I hope I didn't forget anything. Um, if I did, somebody will let me know, and we'll do another video on it. All right, thank you for watching this.